all I could hear. You really should have stuck around for the final divorce hearing. I was very convincing. What was that supposed to mean? Well, after the nice judge heard what a miserable life I had with you, how you left me in the lurch with all those bills. What bills? We didn't owe any money. Hmm. I managed to charge a few things before you left. <laughs> I'll bet you did. Anyway. I convinced him that I had faith in your ability to make money. So since there was nothing to split at the time, he granted me 50% of your future income for five years. You what? It was a long shot on my part, but I figured what the hell. Frankly, I didn't think you'd amount to anything. And up until now, I was right. Anyway, Leanne was very reasonable about the price, which brings me to this. Here's your 10% of the sale. You gotta be kidding. This isn't a hundredth of what this company's worth. I told you. Leanne gave me a real good deal. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a pink slip to go along with that. But you've just been fired. So clear your things out of Bobby's office. I'm moving in there. I always did like it better than yours. You really think you can run this company? I think what I do is no longer a concern of yours. And you want to get out of here before I call security. I've got a little house cleaning to do. Laura, why are you going along with this? It's not hurting Gary. No, but Gary put you here. Are you hurting him? No. Well, then. Well, that's a little different, don't you think? A little. <laughs> Gary's got his millions. You'll get yours. You haven't already. Karen's husband died, and she's happily remarried. Val's husband left her. She's got a bestseller, new boyfriend, more money than she's ever had before. Well, my husband left me, too. And the little I've got is 5% of Lotus Point. I think I'm entitled to that small piece of the pie, don't you? Well, if things go really well, maybe we'll get you a pie of your own. Good. Don't try and give yourself Carrington airs, lady. A wedding band on your finger doesn't mean anything around here. You're still a nobody. Oh, that is wonderful coming from you, who came from nowhere and married Stephen for his money and then was willing to sell her own son. At least I loved him. You're wrong, Claudia. I'm the winner here. And I always have been. I'm a rich woman with my own power. And I don't have to live off other people's handouts. Poor Claudia. That's all you've ever been around here. In case you didn't know it then, you know now. Clayton, would you read this, please? It's Orly's form. No, turn it over. It belonged to my daddy. Will you tell the family, please, what that says? It says here that the Discovery Well in East Texas is the first asset of the newly formed Ewing Oil Company. And it also says that the, the well, the field, and all future holdings of Ewing Oil are owned jointly in equal one-third shares by Jock Ewing, Jason Ewing, and Willard Digger Barnes, and their heirs in perpetuity. Then what does that mean? It means that... Uh, J.R. and Bobby may just have a real fight on their hands for control of Ewing Oil. Now, I meant that your, your, your book seems to be a, a thinly disguised story of the real-life Ewing family. Oh, well, nothing that the Ewings do is ever very thinly disguised. <laughs> <laughs> but my book isn't really uh, about the Ewing family. Well, there's a little bit of my real life, ah. because there's a little bit of me in each and every one of my characters. 
because uh, I, I, I worked and I, I thought and I, I created them from nothing. You know, and I do mean nothing. And I tried to make them very, very real, you know, from me. And I, I hope that the book stands for itself and not as a piece of gossip. And the Creative Force by Valentine Lingerie, Sue Ellen Ewing. That was brilliant, Sue Ellen. My compliments. I had a great teacher. office. Nobody's supposed to be here. Calm down, JR. If you want me to go to another office, I'll... I don't want you in the building. Well, that's too bad, because you and I are partners now. That may be so, but I don't want you hanging around here. I'm not hanging around. I'm going to be working here right by your side every day of the week. You can't be serious. What did you think I meant last night at the ball? I don't know what you meant, but I'll tell you what I mean. I don't want you in my sight, much less my offices, and I always get what I want. Your threats aren't going to work. I'm here to stay, so get used to it. Phyllis? Yes? I'd like a cup of tea, a cup of herbal tea, please. Do you want anything? This is no sentimental game, Pam. You're in the big leagues now. And you better hope you can handle the heat, because you're going to get plenty of it. And that's no threat to promise. Two oil giants, namely Colbico and Denver Carrington, their leaders being longtime friends, are going to form a merger. A very natural joining of two very great forces with combined assets that will set the rest of the financial world spinning. The interest on Wall Street is already enormous as it is in London, Paris, Bonn and Tokyo. So that you know, the Colbico board has already approved the merger. So all that I need now is your approval for final submissions to the proper governmental authorities. I'm a very direct woman. If I do not get that approval, and please understand that I have a controlling interest in Denver Carrington, I shall fire you all on the spot and replace you with a board that will approve of the merger. I don't follow you, Donna. How is it you always know exactly what to do to cause the most harm, and you always do it with such unerring instinct? If I didn't know better, I'd swear you'd made a pact with the devil. Are you trying to flatter me or insult me? I can't make out which. I can promise you this. Dave and I are going to take up where Cliff Barnes left off. We'll destroy you. Now I'm a success. Pop, I'm a vice president at the Tuscany Interstate Bank. I'm going to be on everybody's guest list now. You're a vice president? I'm one of many, but it's a start. I was waiting till I got home to tell you. I'd be where you want me to be. Cubby, I am offering you a bribe. Stay away from my son, Kirby, and I'll make it worth your while. And I will. No sale, Alexis. You're a politician on the rise. I'm a businesswoman on the rise. You're heading for national politics. I'm heading for national business. If things go according to plan, you'll be in the White House in eight years, which is exactly where we both want you. You for the thrill of it, me for the profit. Now, I like my marriage. I assume you like yours. Our lovemaking has nothing to do with that. Because if I ever have to make a choice between love and money, money's going to win every time. Simple enough? Couldn't be simpler. 